And I'm a lucky man, as the saying goes, some guys have all the luck. And I know I've been considered a lucky guy, but uh, some people say I'm a natural, but I work hard for this, okay? I work hard in this stuff. It doesn't come naturally. But when they do call me a natural, that's okay if I make it look natural, but I do have all the luck. And what do I mean by that? Whenever I tell a guy, I say some guy has all the luck, that's because he's standing there talking to a charming lady. And I said, man, you know, some guys have all the luck. Well, I have all the luck, too, and because uh, I got the very fortunate opportunity here to talk to a new doctor in our community. Her name is Dr. Sybil Knight, not Dr. Ann Knight. So we got two doctors in, in one family, and that's the Knight family, and they're doing a wonderful job here in the area of education. We're going to get a chance to talk to Sybil Knight, and we're also going to get a chance to talk to one of the groups that has sprung from her hard work, uh, the Disciples of Inspiration. They're going to come in here and give you some of that wonderful a cappella style uh, singing, and they, they are... Take Six has nothing on them because they're just as good. And what's the name of that other group? Well, I'll ask Sybil in a, in a second. So without further ado, let's get to my good friend, Dr. Knight. Doctor, welcome to the show. Thank you, Lee. It's always a pleasure to be here. Who am I talking about? Kirk Franklin and the Stonk Group or whatever? Yeah. What's that called? Kirk Franklin and the family. Yeah. Now, uh, before we talk about the Disciples of Inspiration, there's a lot been said about how gospel music has become so upbeat and so similar to secular music and that the kids are dancing almost and you see them on BET doing the cabbage patch almost. And, but it seems to be attracting a lot of children to the area of gospel music because uh, the style is not so, more like the, so much like the old classical gospel music. Do you think that's a good thing that you're bringing more children into gospel music by that style? I definitely do. One of the things we need to do is to have our youth involved in more things that heighten them spiritually. And anything that can bring them to God and make them feel good about themselves is something we need. We only have to look at TV and just look around in our community to see the violence and the kind of um, deprivation that is just pervading through our entire community. So to have children and young people and even us, mm -hmm. okay, old people, <laughs> Not me. clapping our hands and feeling the spirit and being able to praise God is a wonderful thing. You know, I know when, uh, when I first, uh, when I was a little boy and I used to go to church and my mom used to be a big, you know, uh, on uh, clapping your hands in church. And, you know, for a while I thought that wasn't cool for a guy to clap his hands in church. But once I started clapping my hand and getting into the music and it was a regular thing, you know, you couldn't stop me from clapping because I had a great time in church. And I think that uh, the same way that we go to other things such as nightclubs and we're ready to joke at the DJ, say, clap your hands, everybody, everybody clap your hand, and everybody clap their hand for the DJ like it's, it's nothing. But if, some, if the choir is singing and it seems like it's a little difficult for some people to start to clap their hand. But uh, once they get started, it's, it's a great spiritual um, feeling. Let's talk about you. Civil Knight, Dr. Civil Knight, never like to talk about yourself. How long have you been a Ph.D. now? Um, since April 30th. It's April 30th. Mm -hmm. Is that something you always wanted to be a doctor or is it sort of happen over the period of time? As you, if you reach one hurdle, then you set your goals for another hurdle and so on and so forth. Well, something like that. But I've had a lot of positive people in this community um, who have gone before me, who've laid down you know, and open all of the doors so that I may have an opportunity. And they have goals, and I always thought I want to do things, and um, I just want personally want to achieve the highest I can achieve. And to me, that was that. And plus, my mom, role model. Mm -hmm. That's great to have a role model in the family. You know, when you have a PhD, uh, and uh, that that opens up a lot of doors for you in the area of academia. Uh, I, I can set my own goals for you. I'd like to see you one day become a school board superintendent, hopefully here in the Lee County area. Am I setting uh, your goals too high? Um, no. Whatever you believe, you can achieve. Okay. You take well, the steps to do it. That's right. Now, uh, in, in the area of education, you worked uh, substantially over the years in the area of education, always working with children. Um, now you're working with the Lee County School System. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're doing there? Well, um, my, my role is District Coordinator for Educational Equity and Student Reassignments. And what that means is I work along with the other team members of my staff, and we um, monitor the desegregation efforts in Lee County and present more plans to the board of other ways such as um, magnet schools, such as controlled choice, in trying to um, better desegregate or more efficiently desegregate our schools. And also I reassign students from one school to the other. Okay. Now that's a lot of responsibility for you. I know that you uh, were actually brought into the Lee County school system under the administration of our past school board superintendent, Bobby D'Alessandro. Now we have a new superintendent who's coming in. Do you think that uh, the community should feel proud of the new superintendent from what you know about him? Well, and I, I know very little, but I think that any person deserves a chance. And I think once we communicate 
our expectations of what we have for our children under his leadership, then we need to give him time to implement those and see where he measures up. Yeah, what's his name, by the way? It's escaped my mind. His name is Harder, Dr. Harder. Yeah, I should I should know that. But at any rate, I'm just Dr. a television. Bruce Harder. Yeah, I'm just a television talk show host. I know nothing. <laughs> right. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do, though, and I, I'm going to give you that assignment, though, is to uh, make sure that we get him on here on this show and so we can talk to him in the near future. All I'll right. be calling you about that. You can promise you can work for me on I that? I sure will. Okay, we'll get him here on Leap His Live. I love putting you on the spot. Let's continue to uh, talk about some of your early days um, growing up here in the Fort Myers area. You attended Fort Myers High School. Yes, That's I was right. educated through the Lee County system. Okay, and uh, you are now a shining star in the Lee County system. Would you say that in your early days that you were sort of a, a, a diamond in the rough and then there were certain people in your life that kind of polished you off and made you a shining star? Or were you always sort of like a shining star and just continued to maintain that status? I don't know if I was a shining star, but um, because of my family, too, um, my parents kept us involved in a lot of activities and so we never really had time or downtime mm -hmm. to get involved in you know things that weren't positively motivated so I think I was very fortunate in that respect and that I was surrounded by a lot of people like I say you know like you were talking earlier about um, neighbors who watched over you and it was that same type of structure so mm -hmm. if you got in trouble everybody knew about it everybody yelled at you and you know that pretty much kept you in sync and we had lots of friends who did a lot of similar things now you maintain your uh, uh, residence in the uh, Dombois community yes got an excellent home out there I've been snooping around looking around <laughs> just kidding but uh, uh, and you've been a proponent of more uh, African-American, particularly professionals, staying in the community so that the children can see them as role models. Why do you think that's important? I think it's important because we have so few, it seems. And when, especially when we're working in a school system where we have um, our kids spread out through all the different schools, you know, to balance the schools racially, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes we get lost. And I'm saying lost the kids. And the more they see us, they're, they'll not think that they can't achieve that. Whatever they see, they want to role model. Mm -hmm. And the more we have, more professionals, more people who are in jobs that, and they're making an honest living, and they're working hard, and they're giving back to the community, then our children will want to do the same. Do you think that individuals have to live in the community to uh, be role models, or uh, as long as they show their presence there, they work hard in the community? I think as long as they show their presence, um, there's not always enough room Okay. And we spread out all over as long as we are positive and we're good role models wherever we are. You know, you have an electric personality. Everywhere you go, people like you. You know, you speak well. You handle yourself well in public. Very charming. Well, thank uh, you. Well, that's okay. I can say a brother can uh, compliment a sister. Um, when you look into the future of our children, what do you see? Do you see uh, something that we can uh, be proud of as far as the way they're conducting themselves now? Or do you see a future that might be very cloudy for our youth? I, I see two different things. I see a lot of times what we expect to see when we look at, you know, the crystal ball. We see a lot of the devastation that society has on our kids. And our kids nowadays have to deal with more. But at the same time, we have a lot of innate abilities and in that we, we don't really we don't nourish them like we should. There was a time when everybody went to church and the church put their arms around them or the community put their arms around them. And we don't have a lot of that anymore because the whole family structure has changed. So our outlook is different. But I think that in the young people that you're going to see today, you see that innate ability shine and come through. And that's what makes me want to keep working with young people because it keeps me ever hopeful because the future, our future, is what they are. Well, let's talk about the uh, disciples of inspiration. Uh, the whole concept behind them, we've got about 10, maybe 12 children. There are a total of thir 13. total of 13. What's the concept? How did it all get started? And, and what are you all planning to do with this uh, well, wonderful gospel music? It kind of started with a couple of friends of mine. Uh, we would travel over to other cities to see a lot of the shows that would feature African Americans. I mean, live shows, live theatrical shows. So a, a lot of things went into this. Um, I started thinking, why can't we have some of that in our own community? Because we certainly have enough talented people, you know, between Rose Govan, Leon, David Christian, I, Teresa Sapferla. I mean, I can go on with all of the names of people in this community who are um, very talented. And I thought, when I walked through our sanctuary one day, I heard the choir, our inspiration choir. And I thought, wow, they, they sound great. And I saw a lot of 
innate abilities coming out, and I thought, boy, it really would be good if we could start something with them. That's great. Now, we got about 30 seconds left before we actually get a chance to see them, but we want to make sure we cover some of the basics before they actually come out and perform. Where can people see them in the near future? What are some things they need to put on their calendar to actually get a chance to see these children live in the community? Okay, July 23rd at 5 p.m., we will be do doing a youth-only show, and it is free for uh, youth. On August 1st, they will premiere at 7.30 p.m. And August 2nd is a dinner show in which Caroline McCullum will be the chef. And that show starts at 6.30 p.m. And all of it will be held at Mount Olive AME Church in the Fellowship Hall. And what's the number of individuals can call for more information or if they want to get their children involved in the uh, Disciples of Inspiration? 332-0305. One more time. 332-0305. Can you promise me that one day you'll come back here and do a one-hour exclusive? No. <laughs> I can't promise you that. Well, we're going to work on that because uh, I think it's so much I want to talk to you about, but you're always passing the torch on to something else. But uh, I think you're passing the torch on to a wonderful group. They are part of you. They uh, uh, have come from your uh, development, and you're doing a great job with the kids. When we get back, we're going to get a chance to talk to the uh, Disciples of Inspiration. But as we always say here on the show, and there's no more relevant than now that for those who say it can't be done, they're usually interrupted by those like Dr. Dr. Knight, Dr. Sybil Knight, who's working closely with the uh, students in the community. We'll be right back after this commercial. Put that remote control down. Get it, brother. One minute. The Disciples of Inspiration proudly present God's Trombone by James Weldon Johnson. <laughs> young man, young man, your arms are too short about sweet God. Yeah. <laughs> stepped out on space and he looked around and he said I'm lonely I'll make me a world <laughs> Brothers and sisters, amen to you too, the disciples of inspiration, ladies and gentlemen, right here on Lee Pitts Live. If you haven't heard, and maybe you weren't supposed to know, these students are doing a wonderful job in the community, outstanding job, fabulous job, and they're doing that gospel music. Let me get a chance to meet some of these uh, students here from around the, uh, around the community. What's your name and uh, where did you graduate from? Uh, my name is Jimmy Collins. I'm a graduate from North Fort Myers High School. How long you been singing? Uh, ever since I was a little kid. You like doing this? Well, I'm not too much of a singer, but I like to act. Okay, okay. You got a little acting in your background? What kind of acting have you done? Uh, I've been in a couple of plays in schools such as elementary and middle school. Okay, keep up the good work. We'd like to see brothers doing stuff like this. How about you? What's your name? What school do you go to or graduated from? My name is Melba Owens, and I go to Fort Myers High School. What do your friends say when they get a chance to hear you sing? Do you think they like these uh, disciples of gospel, disciples of inspiration? Well, I'm sure they do like it because, of course, you know, I'm in it. But <laughs> really, I don't sing that much, but I enjoy it when I do. Okay, great job. Keep up the good work. You guys are really doing a great job. What's your name? What school do you go to? Mia Silas, North Fort Myers High School. And uh, how long have you been singing? Not long. I've been singing in little choirs and mm. youth choirs and stuff. You having a good time? You yes, like being I on am. television? Yeah. All right. <laughs> How about you? What's your name? What, how long? And what school do you go to? Well, my name is Melissa Wilson, and I'm now attending North Fort Myers High School. You enjoying yourself? Yes. What do you think about your uh, director, Civil Knight, Dr. Civil Knight now? Oh, I love her. Okay. Yes, I <laughs> <do>. <laughs> 
Let me see if I can work my way back here. Instead of me working my way back here, let me pull you up here. All four of you, just come on up for a second. And I help my cameraman from having nightmares. Why don't you just squeeze on in here? What's your name? What school do you go to? Nicole Carroll, Dunbar Middle. You enjoying yourself? Yes. Yeah, you like singing? Yes. You got a favorite gospel group? I guess Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin? Okay, it's a good choice. Next. Why don't you slide on back there? Your name? Ebony Campbell. What school do you go to? Fort Myers High School. You like singing? No. You don't? You like you like the acting part? Yeah. All the drama that's involved in it? Mm-hmm. Okay, you can grow to learn to sing too, right? Like to sing it here. Not really. Why don't you give a shout out there to one of your friends? Look in the camera, give a shout out to one of your friends out there watching. That's all right. You don't want to give a shout out to anybody? Nah. Your parents, nothing? Uh-uh. Okay, you really motivate me. Come on up, man. Uh-huh. Jeez. Give a shout out to somebody, man. Oh, uh, I'd like to give a shout out to all my boys on Thomas Street and my go. boys on uh, Price and um, Market Street. That's right. They're looking at Peace you. Peace in the hood. Stop the violence. <laughs> <laughs> you the man, right? Yeah. You all that in a uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, aren't you? You said that. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Tell me, uh, what's, what school did you graduate from? Um, Cape Cod High School. And uh, were you involved in uh, singing over there? Um, I, I did chorus two years, but that's about it. Man, man I hear you can sing, though. Who's your favorite singer? I try. Um, my singer, singing wise? Yeah. Um, Brian McKnight. Brian McKnight? Yeah. Okay. Um, what are you planning to do now that you've gotten out of high school? Um, I'm going to go to college to Bethune Cookman. Mm -hmm. And um, and August 17th, I'm gonna and I'm going to try to major in business. Okay. Uh, you can do it. All I got to do is set your mind to it. I was a business major. Yep. All right. Let me see your resume when you get out of, high, out of college, all right? Yes, sir. All right. We'll see if we can get you a job. How about that? Next. <laughs> My favorite person, what's your name? D'Adrian Diggs. D'Adrian, where do you go to school? Cypress Lake High. D'Adrian Diggs, that's a pretty popular name. There's a lot of Diggs in the community, right? Yes. Who are you related to? Xavier Diggs. Mm -hmm. uh, how long have you been singing? Not too long. You enjoying yourself?